Tom here from Lawrence Systems. We're going to talk about Untangle 16. They finally added a couple really solid features. There's lots of tuning and enhancement, but the big feature changes are WireGuard has been added. So a lot of people asking about WireGuard VPN, especially for a site-to-site -site solution because it's being very fast and simple. That is now integrated into Untangle 16. Also, they have TLS 1.3 support for the SSL inspector. So if you need to do that full SSL inspection, now it will work properly with TLS 1.3. Now, before we dive into all these details in a changelog, let's first. If you'd like to learn more about me or my company, head over to lawrencesystems.com. If you'd like to hire a short project, there's a hires button right at the top. If you'd like to help keep this channel sponsor free and thank you to everyone who already has, there is a join button here for YouTube and a Patreon page. Your support is greatly appreciated. If you're looking for deals or discounts on products and services we offer on this channel, check out the affiliate links down below. They're in the description of all of our videos, including a link to our shirt store. We have a wide variety of shirts that we sell and new designs come out, well, randomly, so check back frequently. And finally, our forums. Forums.lawrencesystems.com is where you can have a more in-depth discussion about this video and other tech topics you've seen on this channel. Now back to our content. We'll start right here with the Untangled dashboard. Good news is, looks the same, pretty much the same Untangled dashboard, so you don't have to learn a new interface. They went from 15 to 16, and we are currently running version uh, 16.01. And I didn't have any trouble. We did the in-place upgrade with this particular system. You go to the upgrade, and there's no upgrades available, so I'm on the latest one. It didn't have any issues, no drama. That's important. We've updated a handful of these, and so far they've all went really well. We had one we had to call on because it seemed to be stuck, but after a little while it just went. So that's as much as I can complain about the upgrade process. Now, they have their whole announcement about their VPN alternatives and updates. And one thing I want to get out of the way right away, this is going to upset some users, uh, and I would disagree with this as well. They have decided and on the NG Firewall Home Pro, and this is interesting. They've decided WireGuard VPN is not going to be part of it. I bring this up because, yes, Untangle is, and I'll leave links to my other reviews, a licensed product for all the enhanced features. And I think the Home Pro license at $50 a year is a great deal for home users that want a lot of the features, the filtering, and some of the content control and application control that Untangle integrates. But they decided that WireGuard VPN was only going to be part of their paid version and their basically NG Firewall Complete, the commercial solution for businesses. I think this is short-sighted, so do many people in the forums. There's probably some reason behind it. Uh, maybe they'll answer in a concise way. Maybe they think too many people were buying the home license and using it for a business when they shouldn't have. I'm not sure, but I'll at least mention that Sorry Home Pro users, as of the recording of this video, November 10th, 2020, it is not available for you. It's yeah, someone may get mad and stop right there. Anyways, want to get it out of the way. Now, back to what does it look like in here? Yes, adding the WireGuard is pretty slick. By the way, I'll note that their WireGuard, if you initially tried it in 16.0, the 16.01 uh, version is a minor release that fixed some bugs with WireGuard. But we're going to talk about the larger change log right here. And this is what WireGuard actually looks like when you're inside of it. So oh, let's go over here. we we'll go to Apps. And we're going to go over here to WireGuard VPN. I set up a couple different devices. One is a Debian system. One is a phone, my phone specifically. And I use the standard WireGuard app and the native built in to Debian WireGuard. No problem setting it up. No problem getting traffic across. Matter of fact, they make things really easy. So when I set it up for my phone here, we can go here to remote client, click on it. And we have a QR code. So I just scan the QR code on my phone and my phone connected just done really easy. Or you can copy and paste the configuration file. And this is how I got the Debian system set up was I went over here and then we just popped, whoops, not that one, this one here for remote client, click on it, change it to config file. And well, you can click the copy button, copy the clipboard, paste it into the WG1 or WG0.conf, however you're configuring your wire guard, run the command line and away you go. It was that easy to set up. So I'm impressed with their implementation and of note, because this is not how WireGuard works. No, there's not like a username password. You just pop those settings in and it connects, which makes it very ideal for setting up very quick and site to site systems. They still have all the other integrations to so the other VPNs, OpenVPN and IPsec are in there. So this is in addition to downside is, as I said, it's paid. Now on to the SSL inspector. And this is where I like the fact that they've upgraded this. And we'll go over here. We go over here to configuration. And we have it set up for TLS 1.3. Came just turning it on by default has that. Then you download the certificate, 
and head over to, and they have a couple instructions on how to do this for setting up the certificate, how to add it to the root store, or deploying it uh, via group policy, whichever methodology works for you, depending on how your network is configured. And this allows that full SSL inspection. Now, the only thing um, of note, and I do like the way they have this by default, and look back over here to the SSL inspector, and you head over to rules, and they do have certain ones disabled. And when you do these deployments, this is an, something that's really important is you will want to ignore certain certificates. And let me show you why. This is an example of my Windows 10 machine that is sitting behind Untangle and of note right here, authenticated using TLS 1.3. So that part's working, but right here it is uh, public key pinning bypassed. And this is something that's important that you have to bypass public key pinning on some things because some things require it. And what that means is they don't like any man in the middle trying to inspect that SSL. This actually goes for the way some security products work and some devices, but they made it relatively easy by going over to here and creating bypasses. Certain Microsoft updates, Citrix, Dropbox are a couple examples. They come enabled by default, but it's easy enough to add a rule that bypasses based on conditions you meet or maybe a certain machine that you need to bypass this. Uh, so I thought that was pretty slick. Back over here, going over some of the other errata, now that we got the big things out of the way, they did fix this right here, which is kind of an annoyance if you, and it's not often I have to do this, but when you're re-engineering a network and you have to start changing internal LAN IP addresses, those interfaces have to be pushed across the open VPN or WireGuard, you have to set what networks you're gonna push. Well, it did not previously, if you change the IP address for LAN interface, this change will now propagate to WireGuard, OpenVPN, and IPsec tunnels, that's pretty cool. They added a uh, threat prevention lookup now shows the results from client and server reputation values. Prior's release lookup only returns server reputation. So it's kind of nice. Uh, custom block actions, you can now redirect to an external block page if you choose uh, to block a connection without redirecting. And then there's a bunch of other minor stuff that's in here. Admin UI now operates on applicable interfaces and numerous performance improvements have been made for reporting to HTTP processing traffic. Now I actually made a bunch of noise just so I could get some reports in there. I feel as though it looks a little faster. It pulls up the reports faster, actually web filtering, web usage summary. Uh, it seems a little snappier. I don't know. I don't know that I felt that it was slow, but I'm generally running this on pretty fast systems, so it wasn't too big of a deal. Now, a few other things on here. Some other minor things, such as enforcement of strong cryptography to a SHA-512 for credentials. Now, overall, I like this version of Untangle. It's auto upgrades, like I had mentioned before. So if you just have automatic updates turned on, it turns on. My only problem really is gonna be for the Home Pro users, which I know will have their keyboards, fingers mashing, uh, complaining, complaining in forums. Maybe they'll listen to us and say, hey, you should do it. Maybe they'll listen to some guy on YouTube, but I really doubt it. Uh, they have their reasons for doing it but maybe there could be a change and maybe we'll see that integrated. Either way, you're still welcome to see WireGuard is as it adopts more widespread usage, uh, it's gonna be you know more inspected, more vetted, and hopefully become a more popular solution for doing things like you know high-speed VPN. Uh, the other features though, so far I haven't had any problems using it and things like that. I just wanted to mention that those are available because in other videos where I have, and I'll leave links to when I've reviewed Untangle, I had probably mentioned some of those things not being there. So these are welcome additions. So I'll probably have to do an updated video to cover all of them. And for those wondering, and those been asking, yes, I'm working on some updated WireGuard videos. All right, I'll leave a link to the change log and my other Untangle videos that I've done, and thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. If you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page, and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general, even suggestions for new videos. They're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.